Okay, guys, so we're moving on to question 10, which is an interesting question because we look at volume, but we also look at using derivatives in the space of understanding different dimensions of shapes. Okay, so it says here, an oil tank structure, as shown in the diagram below, consists of a cylindrical body, okay, of length h, okay, let's just color this in, okay, and two hemispherical ends of radius r, which are both of those measurements are in meters, and has a volume. They've given us a volume. That's important, right? Okay, so then it says here, determine the value of r such that the total surface area of the tank is a minimum. Now, when you see the word minimum or maximum, you should be saying, ah, I should be getting the derivative at some stage because that will help me get inside there. So let's start with what we have. We have the volume. So let's figure it out. We say the volume of the tank equals the volume of a cylinder, right, plus the volume of a sphere. Now, you could be saying, why are we saying a sphere? Well, remember that there's two hemispheres on either side of this tank, and those two hemispheres, when added together, make one sphere. It's important to be able to conceptualize that in your mind. Okay, so I've done that. I've said it's equals 1,000, and then I've basically solved here to get H by itself. Now, you could be saying, well, why did you do that? Well, what we have here is they've asked us to find the value of the radius, right? So they're saying, find this unknown, right? But now we actually t technically have two unknowns in this equation. It's the radius and it's the height. If we can get the height in terms of the radius, then we only have one unknown, right? We, and there would be the radius in that instance, okay? And that's why I've done that because we don't want two unknowns because it will make it difficult to complete what they've asked us to do, okay? So I've done that. Um, remember, pi is not unknown, right? It is a constant. Even though it has infinite um, decimal places, it's still a constant, right? Don't think of that as a variable. It's a constant, even though it looks kind of like a variable. Um, so now we say the surface area of the tank. So now you, you may see that I've written here 4 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. So I haven't included this part of the surface area of the cylinder. And you could be saying, why is that? Well, let's just go back to what we're including, right? We have... These two hemispheres, right? And then we have, we have these two hemispheres, and then we have this cylinder in the middle, okay? But the cylinder in the middle, and this surface area that's being accounted for here, is saying, and I've drawn a picture here, it's saying it's a surface area of that um, sort of middle piece, right? I've just unfolded it there as a net, and these two circles. But the issue here is that when we put it into the tank format, we don't see these two circles on the surface, because they're covered by the two hemispheres on either side. So surface area, what they're testing you here is whether you actually understand what surface area means, right? So surface area means the area that is on the surface. So the only part that's on the surface are these two um, hemispheres, which add up to a sphere, and the rectangular piece from the cylinder, not the two circles, okay? So I've done that. And then I've said, okay, fantastic. Now we have a value for h. Let's put that in. I put that in there. Then I just did a bit of manipulation to make sure that I was putting it in a simple form. Remember this too. So I've canceled, done some canceling here, but kept this too. And this too was important, okay? Because that too has to come into both these terms, okay? Which I've done there. Then I've basically said, okay, I've got this, I've got to this point here. Now I want to find out what that um, radius must be to make that total surface area a minimum. So I get the derivative, okay? Get the derivative. Remember, we're doing it in terms of something derivative of the surface area in terms of the radius. So I bring the two down, subtract one. Remember here, this is quite important. A uh, variable in the denominator can be brought to the top as long as you make the exponent negative, which is what I've done. I've got the derivative, right? So it's negative 2,000, r to negative 2, because remember, we subtract another 1 from the negative 1. I've got the uh, derivative of this um, term here, okay? 16 over 3 pi r. I've cleaned it up a little bit, right? I've just cleaned it up, and then I've said, okay, set it equal to 0, okay? Set it equal to 0, because that's how we get the minimum. Excellent. So now what do we do? Well, we only have one unknown, so we can just keep manipulating. I seem to be absolutely dreadful at managing my space, but that's neither here nor there. So we have 6,000 over 8 pi equals r to the 3. Okay, so let's put that into our calculator. 
6,000 over 8 pi. Remember that pi sign at the bottom there? Pi sign at the bottom. Okay. Put that into our calculator. Now we just want R, right? So let's put that, right? Let's put it into a cube root. Ah, and there's the value of R. R equals 6.2. 6.2 what? Meters. Okay. And that's the minimum. So it's important here to understand surface area, to understand what we're trying to do to understand derivatives, and then finally to just do some algebraic manipulation. Okay, so it is a tricky question. I don't want to undermine um, how tricky these questions can be. But again, it's one of those things. Try and visualize what they're asking you. Okay, try and visualize what they're asking you. Okay, so it needs to be 6.2 meters. The radius needs to be 6.2 meters in order for the surface area to be at a minimum. Okay, I hope that was helpful. We only have one question left on probability and then we are done with this paper.